read. Okay, so that one just built up some pressure. Did it? Bam! So, small talk about the gates of J. Well, the gates of Kundalini. First gate, sacral bone. I'm not trying to show you my ass. I'm trying to point out. <laughs> Let's use a dummy. <laughs> sacral bone is the first gate where you Kundalini usually block. Your Kundalini will block anywhere you have judgment, but this is the main one. Okay? And there is your pure denial of sexuality and desire and all that stuff. Then you have the hose gate is just between, just above the heart, you know, between the heart and the throat, right between my fingers right now, mm -hmm. you have the host gate, which is another part where Kundalini can jam. And then you start when, when you have a more, you know, I'm in control state, I'm, a, I'm afraid to let go into that desire type of, of experience. And you're going to have these kind of problems with your shoulders and shoulder blades that just hurt at one point and you just get all cloggy in your movements, okay? This also affects the balance, but if you have like these kind of shoulder and inner shoulder structure pain, that's because this horse <coughs> gate is, you don't allow your soul to have pleasure in the flesh, okay? That's how the soul interacts with the body, the, the J gate here in the back, okay? So, the, that's not a J-gate, that's the host chakra, the host area, okay? Then you have the J-gate, that's the real J-gate I was talking about. I, I always call in the three J-gates, but actually they're the various gates of Kundalini, okay? The gates of the Jade, um, how do they call it? The Jade Verge, you know? That's how the Taoists call it, okay? the, the power of virility. It's the mandula oblongata, the occiput part of the bone, you know, where it's pointy and all around, okay? That area, you have cha two channels just on the side, you know? Channels comes from the, the, the spine, in the back, on each side. This jams, and when this jams, you will have pain, okay, a lot, also, because it's all like, like in what you don't want to see, okay? So, is it the lies, the hiding, the manipulation, the trying to stay in denial about uh, your experience of desires? Um, and of course, I'm not talking about sexuality, but you know, trying to hide, trying to not see. It's either that you don't want to see your what you want in life, or that you want to hide from others, or you're hiding from others from yourself. And, and all that type of perception area that will lead us to manipulation, okay, manigans, lies, hypocrisy. If we have these kind of patterns, it's normal to jam there, it's okay. Uh, you really want to go in a state of forgiveness about all that, okay? You want to go in a state of forgiveness because just pitching it won't work. Forgiveness is to accept, okay, this is what I am, I need to work on myself. Your Kundalini rising, that's what happened. That's the pain that was caused by your Kundalini rising. And then finally, that's not a gate, that's just your sudarshan or your third eye. All this area here from the base of the nose, the very lower part of the lowest third eye, to above the, the Brahma gaze, the Brahma point of creation in this area here, okay, will cause a clog if you're in a state of control, okay? That's control about life. <coughs> the, the frontal lobes are all about decision making and power of creativity and going to be autonomous in thinking freely, okay? So if you're in control in your life, this is where it clogs. It's not gonna just hurt here, it's gonna hurt the entire frontal area, like the entire, all of that, you know? So if you have headaches in this area, you wanna look at your control and you wanna look at how much you're afraid of what's gonna happen and you want to organize and structure everything and you just don't have faith and you don't let go, okay? When your Kundalini rises, you'll, get, you'll have impact. Now, if you got these symptoms right now, it doesn't mean that, oh my God, I've got so much problems, no. You're having a normal human existence and we just crank up your energy so bad, okay? So intense compared to what you're used to, okay? Doing that Dharani will cause you 
to go into that process of amplification of that power and emanation of joy and release of the enslavement to pleasure so that you can be blessed in that fashion by the all-pervading white light spreading around as a perfume and it would also affect others and then demons flee because you're freeing yourself from desires. Okay? It doesn't mean you don't have them. It means they don't attack you anymore. You still have desires. They don't aggress you. They don't cause you pain if you don't release them. They cause you to go in a more powerful state of happiness. Okay? Ah, I feel like a constant orgasm, but not sexual. <laughs> Forget the idea of sexuality. That feeling is an uh, all-pervading orgasm that has nothing to do with sex. Okay? But it's the same kind of feeling. It's ecstatic. It's being the soul in the flesh and enjoying it. All right? And if it becomes sexual in certain specific moments, it's okay. Allow yourselves. Okay? No judgment. And accept yourself when this happens. When I teach you integration, the first thing I teach you is feel. Emotion. So it's logical that the first that Rani would know would be about feeling. Then I think tell you how to think, how to organize yourself, how to recognize the ego. So it was logical that the second Dharani was about thought at every level. Then I teach you to inhabit, incarnate, and have this, you know, Kama Shaka purification process, how to deal with the flesh issue. It was logical to go there. As a third Dharani, we got the upholder of Nesha, Dhrishtarastra. So we'll go to the next one. Afterwards is to be able to be free from the influence of your senses, okay? So that you can start trusting the information at every level as a soul and not be a slave of your five senses or your six senses because your mind, when it imagines stuff, is also considered to be a sense, okay? Philosophy. Okay, this is the Dasa Rakshasa Dharani. Okay, the Dharani of the ten daughters of the demon Mara. I have to get a bit of history and explain it in a way that it will make sense. Okay. The ten daughters of Mara, the feminine aspect, daughters, that come from, we say daughters because there's a father, Mara being the father. Mara is the demon of death. In Kabbalah, his name is Baal. Okay? When Baal aggresses us, he sends his legion. Legion is Tzeba. In the same way, that the Lord God <laughs> has a legion, we say Yahweh Tzebaot. Baal, which means there is no God, okay? There is no origin. It's the denial of even the source. That's what Baal means. When he sends his legion, it's Baal Tzebaot, Belzebub, okay? That's where it comes from, okay? So the daughters of Mara is their way of saying, <coughs> All these ten plain arch demons that comes from the original negation of the Creator. Okay? So the ten demon daughters that bowed in front of the Buddha in great reverence because these ten demon daughters are in the service of consciousness and recognize the Buddha as superior to their father, Mara. So the ten daughters bowed to the Buddha, Sakyamuni, and they provided a Dharani to protect anyone against themselves. Right? So whoever, whoever would fill the conditions, the conditions is to be actively implicated in your spiritual path. And to do your best, not to have achieved it, to do your best 
and knowing you will attain the highest state of being and accept where you are in your path but say I'm actively implicated I'm serious about it and I'm really into growing as divine being the moment that you're in the process even if you're not accomplished regardless of where you are the moment that you are moving towards accomplishment regardless at, of the level at which you are and the speed at which you do it but you have to be in movement and to be serious about it if you can do more do a bit more doing a bit more I'm not talking about doing more malas I'm saying about being more attentive more severe with yourself more conscious more strict and saying I'm going to experience this as a soul I'm going to force myself out of drama if I have to I'm going to find a way to be spiritual incarnate in the flesh not spiritual all transcendental happy go lucky rainbow blessings and butterflies that's new age you know trying to flee incarnation be here now I exist here I'm so happy to be in my flesh there is divine power and I'm existing as a soul here I want to know myself that serious process okay so if you're serious on your process of achieving Buddhahood and that you're 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 well implicated then this Dharani will be to this the fullest of its power okay now if you're partially serious it will be partially powerful which is cool okay um, I mean when is it truly totally serious I don't know when you are already accomplished I don't know you just <coughs> implicate yourself the ten Rakshasa daughters mean ten results of demonic activity the daughters of demon are the behaviors resulting from an incorrect mindset these ten daughters vow to protect the Buddha because they recognize his wisdom the perfect Dharma and they will not cause him harm even more they will protect him greed anger loss and everyone else and all other types of misdeed are now turned in a way to support the Buddha or the one who holds the Dharma it could be considered as the refinement of mental emotion and physical structures the correcting of one's own ego and the prevention of harm coming from other people's ego I will comment this paragraph even when there seems to be an evil action it is done in the service of the greater good even when there's, you think that you have done, has done a mistake, if a Buddha is implicated, you just hurt him. Okay? So even if you screw up, it was meant for you to grow. Try not to screw up. Okay? Don't use this as a reason to say, well, it doesn't matter, just go in forgiveness and <coughs> screw you off. So it's when even, even luxury and apparently evil deed, apparent pleasure, apparent lust, apparent materialism, apparent anger, apparent provocation is realigned in the service of consciousness. The same way that Solomon said uh, the ten are demons, they actually help build the holy temple of the of the low, holiest of the holiest. The saints of the saints. Okay? In the sense that all this power, this natural power that was condensed in nature, just realigned towards God and <coughs> pushed it to, uh, to where it was aimed. The Four Noble Truths are the cornerstone of Buddhism. They allow us to accept the suffering so we can understand suffering, correct ourselves and be released from suffering. Let me comment that one. The Four Noble Truths of Buddhism is there is suffering. It's not necessary to take it in note. Okay? You can find this anywhere. Four Noble Truths on Google. There is suffering. There is understanding of suffering. There is rectification of, or release of suffering. For truth, there is no suffering. So from, from the point that there is suffering, to understanding, to releasing it through the understanding, and then to know there is no suffering, that's the entire process of the Four Noble Truths. And that's integration that I teach you. <coughs> you have to first acknowledge their suffering. What is acknowledgement of suffering? It's to defeat denial. The understanding of suffering is to go there and understand intellectually, emotionally, and at every level you can get the wisdom of that. Then the release of suffering, the forgiveness, the compassion, the joy, and then you exist with no suffering. Okay? That's 
the cornerstones of integration. Okay. The forces invoked by the Dharani could be interpreted as such. Changing the higher <coughs> states, more changing flows, <coughs> flowing in a changing above what relates to the five senses, increases the noble truths, powerful new ways and structures of behavior, expressing the praise, expressing the resulting new fruits. Okay? And of course, if you act in that way of doing your integration and being responsible of your emotional experience here, this Dharani will amplify the effect, the benefits that result from integration, from observing, from being released from the, the, the stronghold of nature through the five or six senses. Okay. Itime, itime, itime. Iti is above. Me is, uh, well, me means the exchange. Okay. Me also means to be conscious of what goes on in the matrix. Okay, those no bija. So itime, it is the the higher level of exchange, the heavenly flows. Okay, and three times for the heavenly flows in the mind, the heart, and the body can also be considered the heavenly flows of divine, spiritual, and natural experience. Or bhadrani could be that. Atime. Ati is excessive, more, I, okay, and, and then may, the flow again. And iti may is that heavenly flow. So, at every level, or we say three levels, iti may, iti may, iti may, ati may, iti may. So, even more of that heavenly flow. You just blow it up. So, if you follow the beat, that, just listen, then, then. Itime, 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 atime, itime, two, three, four. Nime, okay? Nime, 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 nime. Five senses, okay? So, nime is the exchange, five time to exchange all the physical senses, okay? Nime now, explanation as bija. Ni, the noble aspect of nature, may, consciousness of the matrix. So, the five senses are tangible ways to perceive the untangible consciousness. Nime will cause you to go from a tangible to an intangible, a concrete to an abstract experience. To elevate your senses or to free you from the enslavement of your senses. That's the five nime. Okay? To go from dense to uh, subtle from coagula to solve. Ruhe, okay. ruhe, ruhe, ruhe. Rise, increase, augment. Okay. And it's it's the word and it's also the bija ru, that experience that you just express at a higher level, ruhe. Four times for the four noble truths. But here there's also four times for having a more efficient breath a more efficient inhabiting, a more efficient observing, a more efficient, well, a more efficient feeling, and a more efficient observing, okay? So breathe, inhabit, feel, and observe more efficiently. Ruhe, to, to go and, and get more wisdom of experiences, okay? Stahe, stahe, stahe. Sta is is the same thing as sat in an abstract fashion, okay? So it's the bija mantra of having a very powerful structure, okay? And hey is again to express that matrix type thing. Three times to express the powerful structures in the mind, heart, body, or in the divine, spiritual, and natural world. Akasha, Purusha, Prikti, would be that, okay? You had three one, which is the Rajas. Thomas. Okay, Sadvas, Rajas, Tamas. Stu, hey. Now, it's stu, stu is like sta, uh, but felt instead of present, okay? So, stu actually means praise, and it's the bija of the one of the words, praise starts with the stu. Mmm, stu. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, I feel it. Ah, that thing I love. Hey is to express again. <coughs> to feeling that expression of consciousness that comes from praise. To hey is just to say pray. Okay, that's what it means. It's like a command. Pray. Shu hey. Well, shu is the bija of childbearing of the experience that will result. Shu. And when you're unsatisfied, shu. <laughs> I'm trying to get you get here. I see. Yeah, cool explanation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. <laughs> oh, that Dharma is so far outside of them. I don't know I can. <laughs> Was I here? <laughs> what did he say? Okay. Shu is childbearing and in bija is that experience resulting of, okay? Childbearing of that wisdom. Okay. To allow this expression of consciousness to be born, and where will it be born? In the world where everything born out of your head. Physically, I mean? No. Okay. So a birth is a feeling of something going down, of coming, of, of getting here. Did you see the subtleties of, of this complex Dharani? And when we do it on 4-4, four, four, you, you have one little component, itime, 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 atime, itime. And you have three empty beats, da, da, da. Just let yourself go in the beat, okay? Nime, 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 two, three, four. Rue, 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 stai, 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 stu, he, shue. Okay? So, just listen. Itime, 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 atime, itime. Nime, 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 nime. Rue, 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 stahe, 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 stuhe, shuhe. Breathe. That will boil you, burn you, affect you, drive you, press you, release you. That will affect you in ten ways. As because you have decided to be seriously implicated in your spiritual path. Demonic activity will stop aggressing you. And when you start to know yourself as more than just a soul, but really have divine experiences, these demons will not only let you go, they'll start to follow you to do your bidding. You don't tell them. If you tell them you're screwed, you're a human ego with needs and expectations. If you do something, they'll do it. Okay? So this, this power is the ability to just look at the demon command it. But if you do it, oh, I charge the Dharani, I can command demons. Oh my God, <laughs> you're done. It's true, okay? That's stupid. You use the Dharani to release yourself of their pressure of demonic activity in any time, okay? I mean, there's pretty much no demonic activity here with all that power, and the pain you feel is just your own little problems, your own little things, your resistance, your, your work in progress, which is cool, forgiveness, okay? I have such powerful experiences of love. I just said it once, and that one for me is knowing that passion, that the lowest, densest being in the universe have sometimes more passion than you humans and ego in service to God. If you can go in that serious focus of faith and compassion when you're facing hell. Okay? <laughs> One thing at a time. This will make you discover <coughs> faith and compassion at a level that you probably ignored because you were in denial. That faith and compassion exists at every plane of the universe down to the lowest level of oblivion, of ceasing and existing. That's the only where, place where there's no more faith or compassion because, and that's just a point of view, because it's the ending of all compassion. The ending of consciousness. If there's no consciousness, there's no compassion. Okay? No Padme, uh, no awareness of self. Okay? 
And from the gaze of God, that's a compassionate experience. The disappearing of that consciousness is accepting part of a normal digestion goes to waste. <coughs> okay? Good. When you can, when you feel it, <coughs> when you understand it, first look at the words and follow. <coughs> Slowly. It is me, it is me, it is me, it is me, it is me. Nimme, 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 nimme. Rue, 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 sahe, 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 sue, sue. It is me, it is me, it is me, it is me, it is me. Nimme, 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 nimme. Accelerate the time. It is it is me, it is me, it is me, respect holiness of being an intense sense that even demon would bow to God would they have the wisdom to know about it the greatest <coughs> turn around in the universe welcome as a profound experience of, of acceptance that being here is part of the process. Being here is part of that game of incarnation. Although suffering are unavoidable, they're not always necessary. And you can choose a compassionate path where you want even your senses, even the information that comes from the world to tell you about yourself instead of enslaving you to ignore yourself. Wisdom above all. Just a tad slower than the last time. It is me, it is me, it is me, it is me, it is me. Nim me, nim me, nim me, nim me, nim me. Rue, 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 sahe, 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 sue, sue. It is me, it is me, it is me, it is me, it is me. Nim me, nim me, nim me, nim me, nim me. Rue, 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 rue. silent oration, silent prayer to what is consciousness, to what is dogma and wisdom. It 
this Dharani as a side effect only conditions you to accept that when suffering happens it's part of the deal of growing that you will be freed of the arrogance to prefer suffering than resolving your issues when you prefer suffering than resolving your issues this mantra will push you in the humility and the vulnerability states of personal growth. Enough for a demon to decide to enter a spiritual path if a Buddha would gaze at him with that pure feeling. And I personally know about that one. Feel the space between your atoms, the space inside and between your cell, kind of pulled, bent in different directions to rectify you, and feeling that kind of resistance that was hoping to keep you downwards. It just gets you in that incarnate <coughs> contemplation of the higher heavenly wisdom flowing above the dark cloud experience of the most intense flow of conscious wisdom that even your senses will bow to that even your bodily experience the Nime will gaze upon the abstract wisdom to, to appreciated in its full value. Let's chant the attitude of prayer. Well, this is not a prayer. It's the attitude of, of giving in to God. As you, in you, and everywhere. One God, all things. certitude of growth, this hope that everything will be fine, that everything can only serve God. What can happen? Do your best. Faith and compassion. 
then there is love. Faith and compassion. Relax to your mind, let go. Like after five billion recitation, what's going on? <laughs> My consciousness is telling me stop, and I say shut up. My ego, as consciousness, is telling me stop. I say no, because I'm getting your stuff in denial of that. And my my system is saying enough suffering after one week, and I say shut up. Thank you for your understanding. Vale mahas vale uke muke adi ada vati nriti nriti vati hiti ni hiti ni chitti ni nritjani nritya kati yate na te hona te anna da na de kona di agane gane kauri gandari chandali matanji janguri vrusa ni agasti. Agane gane kauri gandari chandali matanji janguri vrusa ni agasti. Now it's your resistance. Let go. Let it rise. Agane gane gauri gandhari chandali matanji shanguli vrusani adashti. Jvali maha jvali uke muke hadi adavati nriti nriti avati hiti ni viti ni chiti ni nriti ni nriti akati yate nate nunate anada nade punadi. Agane gane gauri gandhari chandali matanji shanguli vrushani agashti. Hitime 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 hitime. 
Nimme, 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 nimme. Ruue, 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 stahe, 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 stuhe, suhe. They are meant to be charged separately and then combined into one overwhelming Dharani at every level emotionally inflamed structure of non earth roaring rectifying that divine Kundalini Sadashivalinga power inside you that bends the power of demons towards the will of God and follow you in that holy path towards Buddhahood eventually as you can. Breathe deep. Be effective. Thank you.